What are the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for the function f of x is equal to x cosine of x? So one thing that you're immediately going to find, well, let's just remind ourselves what a Maclaurin series looks like. So our f of x can be approximated by the polynomial. We're going to evaluate f at zero. That's why it's a Maclaurin series. It's going to be centered at zero. It's a Taylor series centered at zero. Plus f prime of zero times x plus the second derivative evaluated at zero times x squared over two plus the third derivative evaluated at zero times x to the third over three factorial. We could view this as two factorial as well. And we keep going on and on and on forever. And what you're immediately going to find is when you start taking the derivative of f and then the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth derivative, you're actually, have, you're actually going to have to take a bunch of derivatives here. Every time you're going to have to apply the product rule, this is going to get very hairy very, very fast. So there's actually a trick to this problem. What we want to do, we can find the Maclaurin, we can find the, three, the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for cosine of x and then just multiply that by x. Because you know, if we just x cosine of x, you could use the same thing as x times the, uh, or another way of saying it is, uh, the first three terms of the Maclaurin expansion for this is just going to be x times the first three terms of the Maclaurin expansion for cosine of x. So let's do that. So to do that, let's just think about the various derivatives of cosine of x. So if f of x, let me use a different letter here for the function. If g of x is equal to cosine of x, then g of zero is going to be equal to one. And then the first derivative would be equal to negative sine of x. So the first derivative evaluated at zero is zero, sine of anything, or negative sine of any of, of zero, I should say, is going to be zero. And then the second derivative, well derivative of sine is cosine, so it's negative sine, so it's negative cosine of x. And so we're going to have, so the second derivative evaluated at zero is going to be equal to negative one. You might start seeing a pattern here. The third derivative of x is equal to, is equal to sine of x. And so if I evaluate the third derivative at zero, I'm going to get zero again. And then when I take the derivative of this, when I take the fourth derivative, I get back to cosine of x. The fourth derivative is the same thing as the function. So the fourth derivative evaluated at zero, this is also going to be the fourth derivative. I'll write it like that. Evaluated at zero. This is also going to be the fifth derivative evaluated at zero. This cycles. This is going to be the sixth derivative evaluated at zero. This is going to be the seventh derivative evaluated at zero. And so what are the first, what are the first three non-zero terms? Let's see, it's going to be this one, it's going to be this one, and it is going to be this one. And so we have, we're going to have this term. We are going to, or let me just do it for cosine of x. So let me write this down. So I'm going to write, and you might already know the, the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for cosine of x, but I'm finding it here for us. So cosine of x is approximately equal to, the first term here is just cosine of zero. So that's just one. And then the next one is going to be our second derivative. So it's minus one over two factorial times x squared. This is the one that involves the second derivative, x squared. And then we're going to involve the fourth derivative and the coefficient's one. So it's going to be plus one over four factorial times x to the fourth. If it involves the fourth derivative, well, it's going to be divided, divided by four factorial. It's going to be times x to the fourth. And there you have it. These are the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin. Oh, sorry. This is the first three terms of the non. These are the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for cosine of x. And so then we can say x cosine of x. So x times cosine of x. I'm just going to multiply each of these things by x. So I'm multiplying one way the thing, but I'm multiplying both sides of this times x. So I'm getting x minus one over two factorial times x to the third power plus one over four factorial times x to the fifth power. And we're done. And even though this might have seemed a little uh, uh, hairy and a, a bit of a long process, and some people have it somewhat committed to memory what the Maclaurin series expansion of cosine of x and sine of x are, and sometimes e to the x as well. 
And then this could be a very fast process where you just multiply that by x. But as you can see, even finding that Maclaurin series expansion for cosine of x isn't too bad. If you've done it the other way, if you just try to take the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, uh, or all the way to the fourth derivative of this and evaluate it at zero, it would have gotten very, very, very hairy.